Hello everyone and welcome back once again. So in this video today, I'm going to demonstrate radiographic testing. But before that, let us first learn about the basic principle behind radiographic testing. So in order to explain the basic principle behind radiographic testing, I would like to use this image that you all would have seen at some point in time or other. Okay. So as you would know, this is an X-ray image of our hand. Okay. So here you clearly see the bones appearing as white. Okay. So this we have always seen whenever we have looked at an X-ray image. But have you ever wondered as to why these bones always appear white on a radiographic image? The basic principle behind this technique lies in the answer to this particular question as to why the bones always appear white. Okay. So let me explain and that will take you to the basic principle as I said, okay. So this goes back to a property of any matter that is the absorption ability that a material has towards any energy which is passing through that matter including X-ray radiation energy, okay. So whenever X-rays will pass through any matter, some amount of the X-ray energy will be absorbed by the material okay and the extent of absorption will depend on the material and it will vary from material to material okay now one of the properties on which the absorption depends significantly is the density of the material okay so now if you look at our body parts bones are the most dense in our body okay and therefore the bones will absorb maximum amount of energy when any radiation or any energy passes through our body and this goes for x-ray energy as well so when our body is exposed to x-rays for taking an x-ray image the x-ray intensity which is passing through the bones will be much lower compared to any other area that is the tissues and the flesh okay now why this would appear white in order to understand you will also have to talk about as to how this image is recorded and what is being used to record this image okay so as i said one property would be the property of the material itself and density is one of them right on which the contrast whether it will appear as white gray or black will depend on and the other thing that you have to look at is the property of the film on which this image is recorded okay so now if you look at x-ray films these are basically made of a material which is very sensitive to visible light and x-ray radiation okay so this is a material which will interact readily with any electromagnetic radiation including visible light and x-rays and it will darken okay so if you have seen a radiographic film it is basically a kind of photographic film which contains a coating of a material on a thin sheet of plastic okay so that particular material as i said is very sensitive to visible light and x-ray radiation okay and that is basically an emulsion which is coated over a thin plastic sheet and this emulsion essentially contains silver halide particles. It basically contains silver bromide particles. Okay, so this is made into an emulsion and coated over a thin sheet of plastic this is how we all would have seen this film okay a thin plastic sheet right so as i said this material is very sensitive to 
X-rays and visible light also. So whenever X-rays fall on this material, it will darken. Okay, because it can readily interact with X-rays, right? And due to that interaction, the bond between the silver and bromine will be broken. The silver ions will be liberated, and that will create the contrast. Okay, or the darkening that you see. Now, the extent of the darkening would depend on how much X-ray intensity is falling on the film. Okay, higher the intensity, higher would be the darkening, right? So here, if you see the contrast as white, that would tell you that the intensity coming out from that particular part is much lower compared to the rest of the portion which appear black. Okay, so as I said before. The intensity coming out from the bones is much lower because the bones are most dense in our body, so it will absorb much higher amount of X-ray intensity compared to the area surrounding it, that is the flesh and the tissues. And therefore, the X-ray intensity which will pass through the bones and fall on this film will be much lower, and as a result of that, the bones will appear as white. Okay. So I believe now it explains as to why the bones always appear white on a radiographic image. Okay. Now, if you want to understand as to what happens, which leads to this absorption by any material, for that you need to actually look at the X-ray matter interaction. And if you want to understand that, I suggest you. Look at my other videos in which that particular phenomena is described in detail. But for the timing, let us understand that whenever X-rays pass through any matter, there will be some kind of interaction which will lead to absorption of some amount of X-ray energy. Okay, and as we have already discussed, the extent of absorption would depend on the material properties, density being one of them. Okay. So let us see if we can put this whole phenomena into a particular expression or equation, which will give us the basic principle behind the radiographic testing. Okay. So now, when you talk about this absorption, what we are saying is X-rays are falling on this material and passing through it and during this passage there is some kind of interaction that's happening between the x-rays and the matter and that leads to absorption of some of the x-ray energy okay so therefore this Initial intensity I naught that you have will be reduced, and the intensity which comes out after passing through a particular thickness or depth x will be lower compared to the initial intensity. Okay. So this can be expressed by this particular equation. So as you could see, the intensity of X-rays decreases exponentially with the thickness of the material. Right, so higher the thickness, lower will be the intensity coming out from a particular material. Okay, and this parameter that you see over here that describes the ability of a material to absorb X-ray radiation, and this is known as linear absorption coefficient
right so this is understood but we still haven't brought in the material property which we talked about especially the density because while talking about the bones i told you that bones being the most dense will absorb a much higher amount of x-ray energy and therefore would appear as white okay so let us bring that property over here into this equation so that it gives you a better idea as to what happens when the x rays travel through a matter and what role the material property plays in the absorption of x rays okay so i can rewrite this equation as follows i'll introduce this density rho now in this manner right and this particular parameter also describes the ability of the material to absorb x ray energy in terms of the mass absorption okay and therefore this is known as the mass absorption coefficient and this is written as m okay so now we can rewrite this particular equation as this so now you can see from here that the absorption ability of any material will not only depend on the absorption coefficient m but it will also depend on the density rho higher the density lower will be the intensity coming out from that particular portion of the material okay or higher the density lower will be the x ray intensity coming out from a material okay so this again explains as to why the bones which are the most dense part in human body always appear white on an x ray radiograph so this is the basic principle behind x ray radiography absorption of x rays by matter and darkening of the x ray film depending on the x ray intensity or the absorption that occurs in the material which ultimately develops the contrast that we see and you know try and understand what is there inside a material okay so if it is a defect in a component or any material along with the image of the entire part the defect will also form an image and we could actually see it in the radiograph in the x ray image and that is how the defects will be made visible by the radiographic technique and that is how the x rays are used to do non destructive testing okay so now let me demonstrate as to how radiographic testing is actually done i will also show you the x ray radiography machine as to what kind of parts you have and how you do the testing this will also include the development of the film as to how you load the film and what you do after the exposure to get the x ray image okay it involves a detailed procedure starting from loading the film into the x ray instrument to the development of the film in a dark room all right so let us go ahead and see that as to how exactly these steps are done in a sequential manner okay so i am going to use this video now to demonstrate it this video was captured on live experiments in our non destructive lab so here it comes this is the radiographic testing instrument okay 
This is the exposure chamber inside which you have the X-ray tube which generates the X-rays and when you place the sample over here, you know, below that tube, it will be exposed to X-ray radiation and then the image will be captured. And how that is done, let us go ahead and see that. Okay, so this is the exposure vault that is being shown right now. And here you see the X-ray tube. Okay, so this is the X-ray tube that you have over here. Okay. And this exposure vault is made of lead walls, okay, all around this that you see. These walls are made of lead because it is necessary to protect the person and the area around this exposure vault from X-ray radiation, okay. So therefore, this uh, X-ray tube has to be kept inside a chamber which will not leak any X-ray radiation, okay. And lead is one material which can readily absorb X-rays and that is why these walls are made of lead so that no X-ray radiation leaks out from this exposure chamber and the persons who are working around this machine are protected from exposure to X-ray radiation. So now let us see, you know, what kind of uh, parts you have here. This basically will have a tube inside this, okay. And the two main components of an X-ray tube are basically the anode and the cathode, okay. So inside this, everything is there, okay. In order to know how the X-rays are generated in an X-ray tube, you can follow my other videos. But all those things are there inside this. So let us see as to you know how the sample is placed over here to expose it to X-ray radiation that comes out from this particular unit over here. Okay. Right. So here you see a rod. Okay. And above this rod here, you know. If you look from the other side, I'll show you that window is there on this uh, tube through which the X-rays will come out. And this rod is basically used as a guide rod to place the sample at the center. Okay. So this is used as a guide for centering. Okay. So that the sample is placed exactly at the center and it is exposed. Uh, properly and uniformly. Yeah, so this is the window through which the X-rays come out, okay? And just below this, you have that guide rod and below that you place the sample so that this window is right above the sample at the center and when the x-rays will come out from this window the sample will be exposed to x-ray radiation this is the control unit this is kept in a room which is side by this is in a different room in a separate room that is again to ensure that the person who is working with this machine is protected from X-ray radiation. And in the walls of this room, apart from concrete, a lead wall is also there, okay? So that no X-ray can enter in this room so that the person who is working here is protected from exposure to X-ray radiation, okay? So I'll come back to this and show you again what you actually control over here. So this is the control unit for the exposure and also to switch on the machine. This is what is known as a cassette in which the X-ray film is loaded. So the film is loaded right now in this cassette. This is the film, a thin sheet of plastic as it appears, as we all know. So it is being loaded inside this cassette. 
And why it is needed to load it in this manner inside the cassette? Because as I said, right now we are in a separate room and this has to be taken to the X-ray unit, which is kept side by in another room. Okay. So during this passage, you cannot expose this film to light. Otherwise, it will immediately darken as we have already discussed before, right? So that is why this has to be enclosed in a cassette which is light tight and will prevent this film from exposure to light, okay? So that is why there is a need to enclose this film inside this cassette. And this cassette is made of a material which is opaque to visible light but transparent to X-ray radiation. Okay, as you know, X ray radiations have much higher energy compared to visible light, and therefore, although this material of this cassette is opaque to visible light, X ray radiations can easily pass through it and fall on the film which is kept inside it. Okay. The film is loaded and locked and now it is being taken to the x-ray radiation unit the same unit that i showed you before and it is being placed right at the center with the help of that guide rod that centering rod which i showed you okay Yeah, so this is centered with the help of that rod, as you could see right now. And this is the sample which we are going to use. This is a welded plate. So we are going to inspect this weld by radiography and try and see if there is any welding defect or not. Okay, so this will be now placed right over the film that is on top of that cassette so that the distance between the sample and the film is minimized and that will give a better contrast in the x-ray image okay so lower is the distance between the film and the sample better is the image quality okay so this is going to be placed on top of right on top of the film on the cassette okay and it is centered properly and now you can see something over here you know this is known as an image quality indicator this is to understand if the quality of the image which is obtained is good or not okay so this is a wire type iqi which stands for image quality indicator. So the visibility of these wires of different diameters will indicate uh, the image quality, okay, in terms of some standard which, uh, you know, prescribes these wires in terms of different diameters. So depending on the visibility of a wire having a particular diameter, you can get some idea about the quality of the image. So this will be placed alongside the sample in a corner so that the main exposure area of the sample is not affected, but it is imaged along with the sample. Yeah, so it is being now placed with the sample as you could see in one corner. Right, so now we will go for the exposure. The sample is placed and the box is closed. This is the unit that we have for the exposure to control mainly two parameters over here, the tube voltage and the exposure time. You have another control parameter over here, which is the tube current, but most of the time that is more or less kept fixed. So depending on the sample thickness and the kind of sample material that you have, this voltage is adjusted and the exposure time is also adjusted accordingly, okay? So here you could see uh, these three boxes here, you know, which are for those three parameters, as I mentioned. The tube voltage, 
this one the tube current in terms of milliamps this one and the exposure time in terms of minutes this one over here okay so these are the three main parameters which can be controlled from this control unit now once the exposure is done the sample and the film is taken out and it is brought to a dark room before the film is taken out from the cassette and then it is developed to get the radiographic image on the film okay so in the dark room you have these two solutions one is the developer and one is known as the fixer okay so the film after it is taken out from the cassette will be dipped into these two solutions sequentially but before you dip the film in the solution it has to be stirred properly and that is what is being done right now it will be stirred and after both the solutions are stirred properly the film will be first dipped into the developer for a particular period of time and that is why you see there is a stopwatch uh, with an alarm there the red color watch you can see over there and then it will be rinsed with water before it is dipped into the fixer solution and once it is dipped into the fixer solution for a particular time again it will be thoroughly washed in running water and after it is washed the image is developed on the film as you could see it as you put it under light and there is an x-ray Uh, film viewer also which will expose the film to light and you can see it clearly you can see the image clearly here it is okay and if there are any defect you can see that also so here you can clearly see the weld track okay including those weld beads here right you can clearly see that and now if there are any defects in this weld those would also be visible here and this image that you see over here this is uh, that image quality indicator that is also being imaged over here so we also look at that to get an idea about the quality of the image okay yeah so that is how the whole thing is carried out in a sequential manner starting from loading the film into the x ray unit to all the way to develop the film in a dark room okay and at the end of that you can see the x ray image clearly as you put it in a x ray film viewer and if there are any defects you can clearly see them as i said okay so i hope you liked it